Hello everybody and welcome to this week's worship where we are going to be looking at another story with Moses in it and this story is about God providing quail and manna in the desert for people to eat. So we'll get to that story in a minute but before we get started properly I'm going to light our candle as a reminder that wherever we are and whatever we're doing Jesus, the light of the world, is always with us. So, if you want to join in the words, then you can print off a copy and there's a link on the diocesan website, but don't worry if you haven't got the words. Wherever we come together, God is with us. God is here. We come together to say sorry. We come together to say thank you. We come together to ask for God's help. We come together to hear God's story. We come together to celebrate God's love. Wherever we come together, God is with us. God is here. And like in any family, there are things that people do that upset others or hurt others. And what's really special about when we come to speak to God is that we can say sorry for those things and know that we can have a clean, fresh start. So I'm sure that you, like me, have got some things this week that you've done that you would like to say sorry for. So we're going to have the chance to do that now. And then at the end, we're going to put a stone into the water as a sign of our clean start. God loves us and forgives us when we are sorry for wrong things we have done. For times this week when we have made others sad, we are sorry. For times this week when we have not helped others, we are sorry. For times this week when we have not looked after your creation, we are sorry. For times this week when we have been selfish, we are are sorry. So I put the stone into the water as a sign of our clean start. As we leave these things behind, may God forgive us and give us a new clean start today. Amen. So as well as saying sorry, we get also a chance to say thank you for some of the great things that have been happening to us this week. So I have got my thank you jar of slips of paper with things on them that I've said thank you for this week or in the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to take some out to say thank you for now. You might have one of these at home or you might want to stop the video and take it in turns to say thank you to God for something that's happened this week. So I'm going to start off with mine. God, you are amazing and you have given us good things. We thank you for all your gifts to us. Thank you for sunshine. Well, it's been a bit dreary the past few days, but the sunshine has come out in the last day or so. And it's been actually quite hot. And it's just been really nice to be in the garden and be in the fresh air, make the most of the fresh air. So thank you, God, for sunshine. Amen. And my next one says, oh yes, baking ingredients. So I'm very excited. I found a new recipe and I'm going to be trying it out. I don't know whether it's technically um, baking or not, but I'm going to make some marshmallows, um, some vegan marshmallows. So that will be very interesting, but I'm going to have a go at that. So I'm really grateful to be able to go out and buy the things so that I can try and make new things. So thank you, God, for baking ingredients. Amen. And my last one is the internet. The internet comes up a lot in my thank yous, I think because I use the internet a lot. But this last week... Um, I was doing a course over the internet and it meant that I didn't have to travel a long way and um, be with lots of people where it might not have been very safe. So I was really pleased to be able to do the course over the internet instead. So thank you God for the internet. Amen. 
Okay, so now is the time for our story. So I'm going to play the video of our story and then at the end we've got some wondering questions. The people of God were dreaming of food. Their stomachs were rumbling. Their hearts were grumbling. God had done a miracle by bringing them through the Red Sea on dry land. But now they were wandering through the desert and they hadn't eaten in a long while. Why are we here? they grumbled at Moses. Why has God even saved us from the Egyptians if we're going to die from hunger? They turned to each other and grumbled. Moses should have just left us where we were. At least we had as much food as we wanted in Egypt. Moses sighed. And God spoke to him. I will give them bread from heaven. It will rain down on them, but they will need to follow my instructions. Each person will be able to gather enough for themselves for each day but they mustn't be greedy and gather too much. On the sixth day, they can gather enough for two days, that day and the day of rest, but they mustn't be greedy and gather too much. I will give them what they need. Moses spoke to the people of God. God has heard you grumbling at me but you are really grumbling at him. He will show you that he has a plan and it was him who brought you safely out of Egypt. God will give you meat tonight and bread in the morning and everyone will have everything they need to eat. And the people of God looked out across the desert and they saw God's glory they saw God's presence shining from the cloud. That night, God sent birds. Quail. For the people to cook and eat. And the next morning, there was dew covering the ground. When the dew disappeared, the ground was covered in lots of tiny flakes. The people looked curiously at the flakes. What are they? they asked. Moses looked at the people of God and said, This is the bread that God has given you to eat. I wonder which part of this story you like the most. I wonder what surprised you about this story. I wonder what this story makes you feel. I wonder where you are in this story. Do you wonder anything about this story? So you might want to now switch the video off so you can have a chat about those questions and then turn the video back on and we'll be ready for our prayer activity. Sometimes when we're worried or upset, it's hard to trust that there's someone who will give us the help that we need. In the story, the people of God feel that they have been let down. 
Why did they escape across the sea if they're going to die of hunger? God hears their worries and shows them that they can trust him to give them everything they need. So for this prayer activity, you will need a straw and a piece of paper um, about this size, uh, about six centimetres by three centimetres, roughly that. And a pen of some kind or a pencil to write with and some sellotape. So, first of all, what you need to do is think about some things that maybe you need to have some trust for. So, what we can do in this prayer is to let go of our worries. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to let go of our worries and we're going to trust God to help us with them and to give us what we need for those things that we're worrying about that he will give us the help that we need to get through the things that we're worrying about. So I'm not going to show you what I'm going to write on my piece of paper because it's private and it will be private to you what you write on your piece of paper. But maybe there's something that you need a bit of help with, just like those people in the desert felt like they needed some food and they needed help to get their food, to get what they needed and God gave it to them. So think about somewhere you might need some help and write it or draw it on your piece of paper. So I'll do that for me. Okie dokie. I've only written one word, but God knows exactly what that means. And then take your straw. Now, don't do it on the bendy end if you've got a bendy straw. Do it on the straight end and what you're going to do is um, wrap oh, wrap your piece of paper around your straw. Don't do it too tightly. If you do it too tightly then the paper gets stuck and it doesn't work. So, so just wrap it round and sellotape that wrap. Um, don't get any of the sellotape on the straw. You need to be able to move the piece of paper up and down the straw really easily. And then the top, it's going to make like a little envelope at the top. So you can either stick that down or just fold it over. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And then what you're going to do, this is the fun bit, which I can't actually show you because my camera skills aren't that good, is you are going to get this end of the straw and you are going to um, blow through it and you are then you'll see that the bit of paper flies off like a rocket. So this is a sign of us giving that worry to God and knowing that we can trust him to give us the help that we need. So as you're getting ready to blow through your straw, think about that thing that you're, you want God to help you with and then blow and the whole thing will fly off the end and it's like you've given that worry to God and you're trusting him to give you what you need. So I'm going to do that. You might not be able to hear it. You definitely won't be able to see it. Yep, it flew across the room. So you might want to do that and then pray this prayer. God, thank you that you want the best for us and are always there with us. Help us to give our worries and fears to you and to trust that you will give us what we need. Amen. So as we come to the end of our service, let's say together our closing prayer. Wherever we come together, God is with us. God is here. May God bless us. May we know that we are loved. May we know that we are cared for. May we know God's hope. God is with us. God is here. Amen.